Hello everyone and welcome to Miss Throb and Her Antiques. Be sure to subscribe and like. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to be talking about arrows. So, I have three examples here and these would have been actually war arrows from either the Yaka or the Apache tribe and these would have been uh, trade points that are on the arrows from about the 1840s to 1880s and I will go through and explain the differences in each one. But what I want to start off with is explaining where you have a copper arrow that would have been blacksmith made. Let's see if you made it good. There we go. Compared to what the Indians are making. So the Native Americans did not have metallurgy. All their stuff was basically stone. They would knot, flint, chart, stuff like that in order to make their tools. So when we had the white people that started settling here, there became a good trade because, well, of course, you would want metal over stone as a stone would often break, stuff like that. The metal was more usable. So, a bit more of an example. Fun, right? <laughs> now, my favorite one out of these three is this one right here. And this would have actually been a war arrow. Now, the shaft is reed and we have the fletching here. There's fletching on all three of these. Now, the fletching would have been most likely rabbit gut, but they would occasionally use even rat gut. And to show off this arrow a bit more because it is unique, you have the barbs here. That way, when it goes in, you're not going to be able to pull it back out. It'd have to go all the way through. So this is actually a war arrow. These get mistaken a lot of the time for fishing arrows. And the difference is if it was a fishing arrow, the barbs here would have been a lot more pronounced. So this would have been 100% just for fighting people. And therefore you're talking Plains Indian Wars, it would have been right around that time period. And there you go. So there's that one, which I personally find the most unique out of these. Now, this one has a wider head, as you can see here. And the wider head, again, you're going to get more penetration. You have the good fletching here. And you still have right here, which would have been hawk or owl feather. And yeah. Now this, a lot of people would think is actually cut down because of the shorter. It's not. If we look at the end, it's still all totally intact. And the reason they put wider head on shorter shaft, so when you go to fire it, you can actually do it much quicker. So if you had shorter shafts, much quicker. And then we have this one right here, which again is just your normal arrow from around that time period. Different trade points. And yeah, pretty neat stuff. So as you can see, differences in all of them, but all around the same and they all would have been Apache or possibly Yaka. So anyway, there's my trade points uh, that would have been Indian arrows. And what's fun about that, again, you have to wonder people that made it only to have it be used against them again in the war because the Indians never really made their own metallurgy. So bit of an evolution as far as where people start and end and now we're all shooting AR-15s, right? <laughs> Pretty fun. So anyhow, 
Hope you enjoyed my showing off uh, three different examples of trade arrows. That one, the Indians with the views. So, thanks for watching.